ungodly, unspeakable hour of 2.45, 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, we're leaving the uh, truck stop where we parked last night because we got to get into Atlanta, and uh, it's a two-hour drive with no traffic. So we're leaving early to make sure we don't get any traffic. And um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if they, they lied to me about our appointment or if uh, they told the truth. I don't know. We'll see. I'll catch up with you guys when we get over there. We're not quite halfway to Atlanta. I realize I should give you some backstory because uh, you may not have watched the previous video. So in yesterday's video, uh, my rate confirmation says my delivery appointment this morning is at 7 a.m. But then the broker uh, had someone call me, like one of the one of the uh, you know like just the, the minions that they have over there. He's like, hey, the broker wanted me to tell you that your appointment's at 5 a.m., not at 7 a.m. And I just got this feeling like, well, you know, like you should just change it on the rate confirmation. But I got this feeling that they uh, they just don't want me to be late. I, and I got that feeling because they called me like seven or eight times between booking the load and picking the load up and starting on my way with the load. They uh, they were very uh, I don't know, nervous <laughs> nervous about this this load. They got got a lot of nervous energy around this load and uh, so they're kind of babysitting it and uh, so anyway so I'm gonna show up over there at 5 a.m. and you know if the guy lied to me I may not be able to get checked in at Costco uh, and you know we might might have to uh, yeah I might have to go back and wait out on the street do all that kind of stuff so that will be frustrating if that happens, but it's also not the worst thing in the world to get into Atlanta before traffic builds up. And, you know, this two hour drive could become a three hour drive uh, if you leave at the wrong time. So leaving early is good, getting there early is good. Uh, if there's a huge line of trucks to get into that facility in the morning, we may not get checked in until closer to six o'clock anyway. Uh, I read some reviews that suggested that that's kind of how it is over there sometimes. Like if you show up uh, at just the right time when a lot of other trucks are trying to check in, then you could be waiting in line in the street for like, you know, a really long period of time. So I think that might be why the broker was uh, saying show up at five instead of seven. He's just trying to protect this load and like really make sure that they get it taken care of for, uh, for their customer. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations where as a professional I prefer them just be straight with me and just say, hey listen, the line can get long over there. We're really we're really walking on thin eggs with this customer. If you if you could if you could come through for us, make sure you're there, you know, through that line and checked in by seven. Like, if you could get there at like five or five thirty, that would give you the best chance to make sure, you know, they're just straight with me, it'd be cool. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I'm not gonna hold that against them that they lied to me, because uh, I'm like 99% sure that they're just lying that my appointment's a five. I don't think it is. But uh, I'm not gonna hold it against them because ultimately, uh, as, a, as a professional, you know, I, I wanna be there uh, and, and you know, reflect well on myself anyway. So I'm doing it for me, not for them, and uh, showing up early because it's what's in the best interest for me and my business and, uh, and my schedule today to, uh, to make, you know, make it over there and get the load off the truck and not sit in traffic and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that is the backstory behind this little, this, uh, this load this morning and, you know, where, where we're going, what we're doing. We'll see if we, uh, you know, we'll see if we end up, uh, having a 5 a.m. appointment or a 7 a.m. appointment. I guess we'll find out. All right, well, we just got here. Uh, it's 4.50, and there's a line from 
the Costco check-in out here to this four-lane highway where we are now waiting for the line to move up before we can cross the uh, southbound lanes of traffic to get uh... oh that's dangerous come on people that's dangerous unnecessary unnecessary jeez louise so uh... yeah this this uh... maybe showing up early wasn't wasn't such a bad idea huh Cause this is crazy alright well The, uh, the 5 a.m. Costco rush over here in Atlanta. All right, that didn't take too long. About 15 minutes to wait through the line. So now we'll see if uh, they'll take me two hours before my uh, keep engine on. Good morning. Okay, thank you. She said, park in the yard, the pager will let you know when it's time to go to the door. Uh, that works for me, man. As long as I don't have to go park on the side of the road like other people were talking about, that works for me. That works, my friend. Uh, there is some uh, decent amount of parking over here. Anytime I'm looking for a parking spot, um, if there's a spot with, with two spaces open, I always go to that one. Always. I give myself extra room. Why Why try and, oh look, there's three spots right here. Why try and squeeze into a really tight spot when I don't, I don't need to? When I can, when I can kind of, uh, take advantage of the extra space that someone else is leaving for me, you know? <clears throat> Why not use the space that that you have? That's I'm a firm believer in uh, in not trying to force things, especially when you've got a big rig. like butter <clears throat> yep yep that's how I roll right there plenty of space plenty of space and then uh, we'll see how long we gotta wait before we can get ourselves uh, a door Okay, it's now 7.15. I took a little nap. And uh, now we're, uh, we got assigned a dock. So, got assigned a dock pretty close to, uh, pretty close to the dang uh, uh, appointment time, right? The original appointment time? <laughs> This is 
uh, this is nuts. I should have opened up my doors back there. Dang, that, that guy was getting his butt chewed out. I wonder what he did. She was yelling at him. You go over here, then you do this, and then you do that. You can tell it. Anyway, all right, let's get over here and get in this dang dock. At least it's a little bit less of a zoo over here. to get to the parking lot and stuff but we're in here we got our pager it still says go to 205 but they'll lock us in here in a minute and then start unloading us and then the pager will go off again and uh, that's when we'll leave we'll go pick up our paperwork out of the uh, out of the gate so pretty good pretty good system they got it at, uh, at Costco I like it I like it Dude, this guy just rubbed up against that trailer and knocked his trailer door off. He was driving through the yard with his doors open and he knocked his trailer door off. I can't believe I just saw that happen. It's crazy. That's unreal. That's so stinking crazy. <laughs> he just... He saw, I, I could tell because he started to back up too. He started to back up and then he just, and then he just went for it and accelerated through it. And yeah, that's crazy. The door's just laying there. And then he just went over to the dock. Like, I don't even know. Like, he's just trying to get in his dock. That's nuts. Maybe I should go make sure he knows he just left his door laying on the ground. <laughs> All right, so I went over there and I just said, hey man. And he goes, yeah, I saw it, I know. I can't do anything about it until uh, until they unload me though. I can't put it in the trailer until they unload me. I said, all right, I just wanted to make sure. I said, I saw you keep going. I'm like, oh shoot, does he not know? So, uh, so I figured you'd know, you knew what happened. And he goes, yeah, I just, I knew I couldn't do anything about it. So, all right, what's in the road? Um, wanna go, uh, maybe we can just go put it up against that trailer and he goes yeah okay let's go do that so we came over here and leaned it up against the the trailer over there so that uh on his way back out he'll have to grab it i told him if i'm here i'll help him lift it up into the into the trailer but um uh, who knows if i'll be here when he gets out i don't know it all depends on the the quickness of his unloader versus the quickness of my unloader and uh, how quickly they can get it taken care of. But yeah, it was a bummer, bummer uh, situation. Cause he, uh, he was, he, 
it, it really just barely caught the corner and then it, it I don't know it ripped it off pretty easy it was kind of weird <laughs> Says load complete. We got the green light. I'm gonna turn off my reefer because I don't need it. All right, I uh, I went ahead and booked the load, and uh, we'll see. We'll see uh, if it turns out to be good or not. Um, you know, Atlanta's not a great market. We know that. We're aware of it. I knew that coming down here. Um, but there's a load that picks up uh, out of South Carolina, so about 150 miles away. Uh, and because it's a four drop load, it pays okay, better than other stuff coming out of South Carolina. So, um, so I kind of, I kind of thought, well, this will get me, you know, over three dollars a mile for for all miles, including deadhead miles. Um, but it's. I gotta drop my trailer and let them load it tonight, and then I'll pick it up in the morning, and then I'll uh, and then I'll go and uh, make the four the four deliveries. So, um, and the cool thing about the four deliveries is that they are by my house, so I'll be able to go home at least for the night. Maybe I'll look at uh, going trucking uh, over the weekend because. Uh, definitely gonna want to take a long weekend next weekend for Thanksgiving so I may truck through this weekend but at least I'll get one night at home and that'll help uh, keep me uh, charged up and uh, and and keep me going you know go home see the family you know sit in the truck with Gus for a little while let him let him uh, have fun he likes to honk the horn now. He also likes to step on the brake pedal because he hears the uh, the air escape when he lets off, you know, presses. He basically airs down the brake system when, when it's parked. So every time I get back in the truck, I'm like, oh, I've got to build up the air again. <laughs> but um, anyway, so uh, right now, uh, th this is our plan. I looked at some loads that picked up in Atlanta and delivered in Greenville, South Carolina or that area. Uh, because uh, I, I I saw them, they were sitting there. They're like nine hundred dollars to go like 160 miles, 150 miles. So I tried to book one of those, but none of them worked with the scheduling that I have for this other pickup uh, because I need to drop my trailer by 4 p.m. So instead of kind of making an extra eight hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars, one of them only paid like six hundred dollars or five hundred dollars. It was a it was a van load instead of a reefer load. Uh, so if, instead of making that extra money to go up there uh, or you know get get up to Greenville, uh, I'm just gonna deadhead. And like I said, it's profitable and you know it, with the deadhead included. So it's just not very lucrative because uh, the rate per day isn't great because of the drop trailer. But uh, that lane usually pays $800 uh, from Greenville to Nashville markets. So. Uh, Eight hundred dollars for reefer freight going going South Carolina to Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. So I mean, it's it's not a great lane to to be on. So the fact that I got it for uh, you know pretty much twice as much, twice the rate, uh, you know, makes it makes it good for the lane that I'm on and for what we're doing. And uh, it would have. It would have been really lucrative. It would have been really good to get an extra thousand dollars to go to South Carolina and then grab that one there. That would have made my week like real, really a good week. Uh, but instead, uh, it'll just be an okay week. And uh, like I said, I'm cool with it. I'm good with it. I'm not worried about it. I just, uh, yeah, that's the direction. Uh, that's the direction I gotta go. Gotta, gotta do. Uh, that plane looks like it's gonna land on the, on the freeway. Land right here. Land right here. Anyway, uh, so uh, yeah, so we'll head uh, up to South Carolina, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys along the way. All right, we stopped over here to uh, let's see. Ooh. 
Um, we stopped and got some fuel at the uh, pilot across the street, but now we're gonna come over here and see about this uh, let's see I don't know which way to get back there but I'm trying to get back to that blue beacon back here and get this thing washed up I haven't washed it since we went through the uh, uh, through the snow in Kentucky and uh, so that was that was uh, quite a, quite a while ago now. Tell where this guy was going, so I figured I'd wait for him to come around this corner. Where, where are they going? I don't, I don't understand. We, he's, he's going in the wrong way. Or he's facing the wrong way, right there. I don't know where he wants to back up to or what he wants to do. But I'm gonna get in line over here, and we're gonna try and get this thing washed up. There we go. Getting it washed up. Getting it washed up. Looking good. Looking good. All right. We got a clean truck. So we're going to come over here. To this uh, Mexican restaurant now, Iguana's Mexican restaurant. All right, well, that took way longer than I thought it would, um, but that's okay. I mean, we uh, I they they didn't open till 12, and then so I came back out here and I was doing some paperwork in the truck, and then by the time I got back in there. Um, a bunch of a bunch of guys had gotten in line and so um, I'm gonna turn this on and uh, turn it up to 60 because uh, I want to I want to dry it out uh, because I'm gonna do a frozen load next I don't want residual water still being in there from the washout but uh, anyway look at that truck man don't you guys want to buy it um anyway uh, so by the time I went back in there they have been open for 15 minutes and there there was a bunch of people that just it's just a, a husband and wife team the wife's working the front front of house and the the husband's working the back of house and back there cooking and in the kitchen and doing all this thing and anyway so i've been here for like an hour and a half now <laughs> but whatever i got a quesadilla out of it you guys can't see it maybe i'll take a picture in the truck but i do want to start getting down the road though some point. Pulling up to a mare cold, not a mare hot, it's a mare cold. And uh, pull up in here in uh, Piedmont, South Carolina. So it says, Stop here. All Visitors must sign in. There's a shipping and receiving right there. 
All right, cool. I'm gonna go do this. Let's do it. All right, we're uh, gonna put the trailer in door 25, and um, and then uh, we'll wait until they load it, probably tomorrow. Um, they kind of got my hopes up a little bit. They said, well, if you, um, like, if if they can load it, and there's no guarantees they can, but if they can load it, do you, do you want to load it today? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, you know, the earlier the better, I think, right? And um, so they called back and they said, oh, we already let a couple guys go. Uh, go home so uh, they're gonna load it in the morning like they had planned on so all I'm gonna do is just come over here and uh, back it in back it in back it in and uh, once we get it uh, backed in, I'll slide the tandems. I'll uh, open the doors. They have me set it to negative 20, but keep it off. They'll turn it on after they load it. But it's got to be set at negative 20 so that once they load it, they can just turn on the switch. And that will be that. sure I'm far enough away from it that I can get the doors open. All right. Let's do this. All right. We can drop the trailer over there. I came over here. I already took a shower at this pilot. Um, I'm parked by the gasoline pumps because this place is under construction and it's packed out. It was packed out at 3.30 when I got here. So kind of crazy. But um, the manager lady... I parked in one of the reserve spots and then I went to go reserve it and they're all filled up. And I, so I walked in, I said, Hey, um, I said there, it says there's zero reserve spots left. Um, is that cause the system's down? Cause the shower system was down. So I kind of was hoping, Oh, okay. Maybe the system's down. I said, can I, uh, can I just pay you guys for it? And she goes, no, they, the, the res the parking reservation system's working. So if it says zero left, that means we're full, we're full for the night. And I said, okay, I said, I I'll, uh, I said, I'm just bobtail, so maybe I'll try and find somewhere where I can squeeze in. She goes, if you're bobtail, you can fit, you, uh, you can park in any regular spot. And I was like, okay, well, my truck's a little longer than, than others, but I found a spot where there's other bobtails next to me, so I kind of don't stick out as much as I could, but I'm still kind of in the way. It's kind of a hassle. Anyway, but we dropped the trailer, uh, took a shower. Um, what else did I want to tell you guys? Oh. I was just going to say, so we started the day in Dublin, Georgia, um, next door to that pilot over there, and then uh, went to Costco in Atlanta, um, and then deadheaded up from there to the Flying J and got fuel in um, in Carnesville, Georgia, and the, and the Blue Beacon got the truck washed, and then uh, finished that deadhead up here to uh, Piedmont, South Carolina, dropped the trailer, and now um, I dropped my pin, just like I dropped my trailer. And uh, now we're hanging out here at the pilot. So we'll be here for a little while. And then uh, tomorrow morning we'll go, we'll pick hook up to our trailer. And then we got to bust butt over to uh, Tennessee to make four deliveries. And they're all to like grocery stores and stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually look at the map and kind of plan out each of my stops, find out where to enter into those places, where to exit those places. So I can kind of have a game plan going into tomorrow because I've done, you know, multi-stop, uh, grocery store delivery or Costco delivery or or like um, uh, you know like doing the plants and stuff where I would go to like Home Depots and Lowe's and like every single one is different you think they're similar and they are similar but every single one you got to come in from a different uh, entrance than you think you might be able to and so anyway I'm gonna try and do as much of that homework tonight as I can and then uh, yeah and then we'll 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 be headed out tomorrow back to Tennessee and um, 
I don't know how long it's going to take us, but you know, we'll, 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 we'll tackle that. I guess that's for tomorrow's video anyway. Right. So, um, for today we knocked out everything that we needed to do today and, uh, weren't able to get that $900 or thousand dollar load from Atlanta that, that came up here to South Carolina because they delivered like late at night tonight. So, uh, that would have been really cool though. That would have been, that would have been hot. That would have been awesome. But alas, it didn't work out. So this is where we're going to cut the video off. Sun's going down. I'm going to start thinking about where I might want to go for, uh, for dinner. And yeah, that's, that, that's, this is the ball game. This is it. So love you guys. Peace out. See you on the next load. And I can actually say the next load this time because it's going to be our next load tomorrow. It's awesome. It's really exciting. It's fun stuff. And remember, chill till the next episode. I think that's how I'm going to end every video from now on. Some of the greatest of God's creation right there. A black Peterbilt. <laughs>